Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 6th of July. We're looking at excess mortality. Now, basically, there's about 1,300 uh, too many people per week dying in England and Wales at the moment, and we don't know why. It is not COVID-related. People are dying much more than we would expect based on previous year's averages. And I'm going to be giving evidence that suggests that this is not just a UK phenomenon. This is an international phenomenon. But we've got good quality data from the UK. So that's where I want to look. So that's what this is about. We'll be giving some reasons why this might be happening. And um, we'll be trying to think a little bit about what we need to do about it as well. But it is definitely happening. There's been anecdotal reports about footballers and things having heart attacks. But th 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 this, this is definite statistical data now. So we can be sure about this evidence that we're about to give. So hundreds more people uh, are dying per week in England and Wales than usual. And it's not from COVID. Office for National Statistics. Um, COVID deaths for the UK, week of the 24th of June ending, 346 people died from COVID. Um, not all of those from COVID, some of those were with COVID. Uh, 17th of June, it was 309. But the total deaths registered in the UK were 12,278. But this is the key thing. This is nearly 16% above the five-year average. So way more people are dying than we would expect based on the previous five years. Way more than we would expect. What is going on here? Obviously, if more people are dying, this is quite a big concern. 16%, 15.9% more people than we would expect this week, this time of year, based on previous years. Not COVID-related. Latest breakdown for England and Wales that we have here. Uh, so the excess deaths, deaths more than we would expect, 1,540. COVID deaths, uh, 285. Uh, about 6% of the COVID deaths gave COVID as the underlying cause. So 166 were from COVID and 119 were with COVID. So um, basically of this 285, quite a lot of those were basically incidental recordings on the death certificate. So if we take non-COVID excess deaths at uh, 1,540, take away the COVID deaths, that means that the excess deaths that are not due to COVID are 1,374. So these are excess deaths that are not due to COVID. This is too many to be a statistical artifact. This is a genuine effect. Let's just look at a couple of graphics. So um, here we see the excess deaths. The, 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 the black line there, the black marks there are what we would expect. Of course, this is going to vary depending on the time of year. But obviously we see in the, in the COVID pi uh, uh, spikes way more deaths due to COVID as we would expect. The dark blue are the deaths due to COVID. But now we actually see that um, the deaths are above the five-year average but not attributable to COVID. Here's a bit of a blow-up of that. So the COVID are the... the, uh, the uh, the deaths there in blue, all the deaths, all the deaths, you know, the non-COVID deaths are in green. And we see that these are above the five-year average. And only a small proportion of those are due to COVID. Only the blue bit is due to COVID. This one here, where the deaths appear to be below the five-year average, uh, it was a bank holiday in England and Wales, which in the UK are uh, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on your perspective, taken quite seriously. Um, so England and Wales data. Um, this is England and Wales data. This Now this is the five years up to 2019. So the ONS is quite clever here really. So it's given this figure of excess deaths here. Um, the the uh, that, that one, the 15.9% excess deaths. Um, that's based on the previous five years. But of course, the previous five years included 2020 and 2021, when we had a lot of COVID deaths, of course. So these statistics take into account uh, the, the, five year, the, the, the period of five years before that, up to 2019. So they don't include uh, COVID deaths. So we see that here, uh, the deaths are even higher. So 16.6% excess deaths in England and Wales over pre-COVID times. And... Uh, 18.2 if we just take Wales on its own. So very much higher in Wales. So we've got this excess of deaths 
that is not attributable to COVID. Why are these people dying at a higher rate? Now, first thing to look at is where the deaths are occurring. Um, now, most of them are occurring at home. So um, 31.5 of these uh, above the five year, 31.5% above the five year average, simply people dying at home. Hospitals, 12.1%, other care homes, 10.3% above above uh, five year averages, other settings, prisons, etc. 10.1%. So we see, especially at home, a lot more people are dying in all of these situations than we would expect. And most of this is not attributable to COVID. So what is going on? Well, um, some experts have put together a few ideas and I put to, I've added these with a few of my own. Um, so quite a few health experts are calling for an urgent investigation, which, of course, I would uh, I would call for that as well. We need to find out what's going on here. Um, pandemic response is probably part of the reason. The effects that we took to control the pandemic in themselves would have caused some um, excess deaths. There's no question about that. Ironic, uh, but probably going to be ongoing for some time. And we'll look at some examples of that now. So stress is certainly a factor. Human beings relieve their stress quite often. Um, if I'm stressed, I'll try and go for a walk with one of my mates or something like that. Or, you know, human, human beings reduce their stress a lot by talking to each other and by touching each other. And of course, that wasn't possible for periods of time. This can have knock on effects. That is for sure. Reduce physical activity. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> During the first and second proper lockdown periods, I saw more people walking outside my house than I've seen for years. So, um, you know, in family groups, which were, they were allowed to do, household groups. So is that true? I don't think we've got any firm data on that, but it's a possibility. Lack of access to healthcare is probably the biggest one. There's going to be an excess death, particularly of cancers and other conditions. That is definitely a big factor. People were unable to access healthcare for fear or for whatever reason it was. People didn't access healthcare as they normally would. Therefore, diagnoses were delayed and treatments are delayed. And that's going to have, especially if you think something like cancer, that's certainly going to have a, a significant effect in increasing deaths. Uh, delayed referrals for diagnosis and treatment, both of those. Still a big waiting list at the moment. Specialists are very... Uh, concerned rightly about getting the waiting list down but of course more people are coming in all the time um which which is is a problem um we, we are well behind treatments that should be getting given now are not being given now and this is causing some deaths cost of living crisis um is definitely there um now or i'm not an economist but clearly clearly the uh the, the factors all of the lockdown costs, the COVID costs are massive. Government spending was, some might say, injudicious. Um, then we've got the effects of the tragic war going on in, in Eastern Europe, the, the Ukraine situation. All of these things are contributing to real increase in cost of living, causing stress, dietary change and difficulties. Um, now, another thing I thought about particularly was... Uh, the effects of COVID itself, um, people whose health was is weakened by COVID. Now, we know there's a big long COVID problem. Is that leading to a certain amount of deaths? It's hard to tell. Could COVID be affecting the immune system? Could it be causing other longer term diseases? Possibly more data needs to come out on that. For example, uh, after COVID, we know there's an increased risk of stroke. We know there's an increased risk of heart attacks and probably other diseases as well. Has vaccination been causing increase in deaths? We know vaccination has caused some deaths. Clearly, we know that. We know people have died after vaccination, COVID vaccination. We know that. Um, is there an ongoing effect here? Is there an effect on the immune system? Um, to tell you the truth, we don't, have, we don't have too much data to go on on that. Governments haven't released much data on that. So it's certainly a possibility. Certainly a possibility that vaccination is causing some increased deaths. We know there's increased autoimmune diseases. Is this due to vaccination? Um, is it due to people who've had COVID, both affecting the immune system, of course, probably partly. Uh, but there again, we know that autoimmune diseases have been increasing 
in the years prior to the pandemic. The degree to which they've been accelerated by the pandemic, uh, we don't really know yet. More to come on that. We need to find these things out. New medications used as COVID treatments. Now, I'm not going to mention particular treatments, but you and I know that pharmaceutical companies have uh, produced new treatments that they uh, put forward as, as antivirals, and these have been given to people. They haven't been used for very long, so we don't know what the long-term effects of these are. By definition, we don't know what the long-term effects are because we haven't had a long time yet to find out what the long-term effects are. I'm not too concerned about... Um, that, that apply, the same applies for vaccines, of course. I'm not too concerned about the repurposed drugs, such as the antibiotics, such as the steroids that are used uh, quite extensively in in, um, in severe COVID, because we, we are very good at using steroids. We know very precisely the different steroids to use. We know very precisely the doses, and we know very precisely the adverse effects, because we've been using them for, well, certainly all, all, all of my career. We've been using them since, uh, since well, I've been using them since the 70s. So <laughs> um, they've probably been used, they, they, were, they were well established when I, when I started as well. So we've been using these for, for decades. We know about these drugs. The same with the anticoagulants. We know about those as well. And um, OK, th th there are side effects, but we know about these and we can account for them. So I don't think that's it. But I think there is a question mark over the newer treatments. Now, just before we look at what the great and the good have to say about this, I just want to show you a couple of interesting couple of interesting slides here this is the first one this is the total number of deaths we see this was the peak in uh, the 1918-19 pandemic and then we see a comparable peak uh, in 2021 but of course the population here was way less than the population is uh, now um, so that's quite uh, interesting to look at so but it's better to look at it in terms of population so this is this is crude mortality rates and basically, a, a crude way to look at crude mortality rates is, is, is its deaths per, per thousand. So it's taken into account the population size. So I find this fascinating. We had a peak there in 1918-19. And if you look at the size of the peak that we've just had, uh, it's much, much smaller. Way, way smaller peak that we've just had there once the size of the population is taken into account. So 1918-19. Uh, 2021. Also fascinating to note the reduction in uh, death rates uh, during the uh, latter part of the 19th century. Uh, th this improvement here is largely due to the fact that we had in greatly improved uh, social conditionings, improved uh, housing, improved uh, nutrition. The effects of drugs only came in much much later. For example antibiotics uh, only became available, um, well, th th some became available in the uh, early mid-40s to, to the military. Um, but uh, mo most people in civilian life didn't have access to antibiotics till about late 1940s. So we can see that most of the reduction had already occurred by, by that time, showing that the way people live is very, uh, is very important. Anyway, let's go and look at what people are saying about this now in terms of... Uh, People commenting. Oh no! no actually, let, let's look at excess deaths in different countries first of all. This is this is um, different countries. Now, this is the zero line, so this is what we would expect. And of course, these are higher because this is in the pandemic period of time, so we would expect it to be higher. So, just a couple of snapshots of excess deaths there. Um, September the twelfth, twenty twenty-one, United States deaths forty-six percent above average. South Africa twenty-six percent. Australia less than 1% because the uh, the virus hadn't really arrived much in Australia by that time. Uh, New Zealand, um, actually New Zealand overall is down. It just happened to be up a bit that month. But the point is it's been higher than the average all throughout the pandemic, of course. Uh, not surprising because, of course, we had a pandemic. So that's not too surprising. And later on in the pandemic, there's the figures there. So... Um, New Zealand um, does have an excess death there, actually. Um, now it has um, South Africa, United States, uh, United Kingdom was actually below the average then. But of course, it's much better to look at the cumulative figures. Now, first of all, notice down here uh, that these are around zero, which you would expect because this is before this is before the start of the pandemic. You would expect it to be around about zero. Then these are pandemic times here. 
South Africa high than the United States in terms of excess deaths, United Kingdom, Ireland, Canada, Australia. New Zealand actually on average is still slightly below. Canada now, uh, Australia, New Zealand slightly below. Australia now uh, has gone slightly above um, the averages, but these are the countries well above. But the point is we're making now is that not all of these deaths can be attributed to the pandemic. It's easy to just say, oh, this is the pandemic. And a, a lot of them were, most of them were, but not all of them. This is the point. We now have this excess death rate of 16 or more percent that is not attributable to COVID. That's the key thing. Now, what are people saying about this? Um, Professor Paul Hunter, um, who we've talked to on this channel, um, I think the reality is going to be quite complex, but it's something we need to be aware of and actually try and understand. We need to try and work out what's going on here. So he says there's despair from losing, losing your livelihood. That if that's gone down the swanee, that's not good, of course. Uh, but there's other factors as well. It doesn't have to lead to suicide. Chronic stress can lead to all sorts of problems. So uh, Professor Hunter, looking at the socioeconomic factors there, he does look at other factors as well, of course. That's just an example. Um, Dr. Uh, Charles Leveson, Dr. Call, uh, GP firm of some sort i'm not quite sure what it is a gp company i think um the reasons behind these horrific numbers are complicated and none of us fully understand them true so that is exactly why there should be an urgent comprehensive government inquiry couldn't agree more about that if we don't know let's find the heck out if anything the situation seems to be getting worse death rates seem to be increasing not due to covid Considering the relentless focus on one virus over more than two years, so government policy has basically focused on coronavirus over the last two and a bit years. And let's be quite honest about this, at the expense of many other diseases. Because when we had the pandemic, other diseases didn't go away. And the government has over-focused. It would now appear have over-focused on uh, coronavirus. Uh, requesting answers from government on thousands and thousands of non-COVID excess deaths is entirely reasonable, absolutely. If there's thousands and thousands of excess deaths that are not attributable to COVID, we should know why. And if you want a bit more on user uh, on mortality figures, that is an excellent guide there from the Office of National Statistics. Feel free to... Uh, check that out so there we go um there's an excess in deaths in the uk for sure other countries very probably we don't know why it is but we need to find out and on that question mark i think that's about all we've got to say at the moment we, we will be following this of course we've given some suggestions um but we do need some formal studies into this let's hope it goes away soon um, but um, on current trends it isn't so we'll keep an eye on that but in the meantime thank you for watching <laughs>